Hey Geek Family, we're back. This time we're checking the video out for the most expensive house in the world. I'm Nathan. Ooh. I'm Rachel. Troy. Jordan. Oh, he's not here again. He's out finding trucks or... Uh, I don't know. He's fixing, holding hands fixing with one of the people. trucks that he works on. Yeah. So we, that's what the, that's what he says. Uh, but real quick, before we check out this, this video, I just want to say thank you guys again so much for all your support on the channel. And if you can, can you hit that like and subscribe, followed by that little notification bell. Bing. 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 So, without further ado, we're going to check out the two billion dollar. Bless home. you, it's you. <gasps> okay. I hate you both. Let's check it out. <laughs> Now you know my pain. The most expensive home on the planet. In the inner city of Mumbai, India, not far from the poverty-stricken slums, on the renowned Altamont Road, stands Antilia, the most expensive home ever created. This home ascends 27 stories stretching 568 feet high, the granting the massive the structure with prime views of the Arabian Sea. In technical terms, the home is the second most expensive residential property in the world, considering Buckingham Palace is worth around 5 billion US dollars. However, Buckingham Palace is considered a crown property, mm -hmm. whereas Antilia is a private residence. And the most expensive private residential property at that with some pricing estimates as high as two billion dollars. Even still, any list in which a residence is preceded by Buckingham Palace pretty much guarantees that place is going to be over the top luxurious Ooh, and is likely a That's house a I'd love to move into. In this video, I'll take you on a virtual informative tour of this ostentatious estate while engaging all of two of your senses. In this massive home, there are several ceilings that are double or triple heighted, so the 27-floored skyscraper looks more like a 50 or 60-floored building. Can you imagine only being as tall as an ordinary 27-floor building? <laughs> Laughable. On some of the lower floors, there is a multi-level car lot that can hold 168 vehicles, including Mukesh's precious RS5 Craw Maybach, a car for very important people. Somewhere in that car lot is also a car service station. But if cars aren't your style, don't worry. The home also has three helipads placed on the roof. Few things say billionaire like more than one helipad on the roof. Both the private car lot and helipads are violations of residential bylaws in Mumbai, but from what we can tell, no one has forced the billionaire's hand to make any changes. Above the car lot, you'll find an extravagant lobby composed of nine elevators. Further up is a two-story recreation center with a lap pool, a gym, a juice bar, a dance studio, and a yoga studio. Wow. Floors like these are how Jeff Bezos transformed his I Sell Books body to his I Sell What I Want physique. As you continue to ascend, you will eventually run into a spa and a ballroom. The ballroom is adorned with multiple crystal chandeliers that cover 80% of the ceiling, leaving a shameful 20% exposed and unadorned. To capitalize on the entertainment focus areas of the home, Aww. there's a movie theater that there's sits 50 viewers. Right there, yeah. there are multiple That's balconies and here. terraces with luscious gardens hanging over the sleek facade along the home. The vegetation attached to the sides of the building are meant to absorb sunlight in order to keep the interior as cool as possible. Hopefully that touch can put a dent in what must be a monstrous electricity bill. Right? As if all this luxury wasn't enough of an escape from the hot, busy streets of Mumbai. The home comes fitted with an ice room equipped with a snow generator wow. meant to mimic a winter wonderland. A creative addition rivaled only by the likes of Willy Wonka. The immaculate structure was designed by architects Perkins and Will out of Chicago, and the interior design was overseen by an Australian company called Lighten Holdings. While the 400,000 square foot building is home to just six, it's also meant to make room for a staff of 600 cooks, cleaners, and security personnel. Oh, okay. So that makes the size of the mansion less excessive, right? 
I double checked that stat by the way and I can confirm, a hundred staff per family member. The building oh is gosh. named after a legendary island, also called the Isle of the Seven Cities. The tale of this island originates from an old Liberian legend in which bishops fleeing from the Muslim conquest of Hispania escaped to an island and created seven settlements there. There's not much else on that fun fact, and no one seems to know why the owners of the home took to that fabled island, but that's the thing with being a billionaire. No one questions your decisions. Considering the unique shape of the skyscraper, and the fact that its construction cost not six, not seven, not eight, but ten figures, it'd be a fair ten assumption to presume figures? the design of the home is symbolic, or at least, you know, on purpose. And that assumption would be correct. This incredible structure was meticulously crafted with Hindi influence and generously laced with religious symbolism. Within the 27 stories, there are six sections of the home that are meant to reflect earth, water, fire, ah. air, sound, and light. These elements were placed from bottom to top as to mimic not Nickelodeon's avatar, The Last Airbender, but the ascension to enlightenment. Throughout the mansion, there are two reoccurring motifs the sun and the lotus. These symbols are meant to represent rebirth. The materials used to stand for these themes include marble, crystal, and none other than Mother of Pearl. Oh. There is a temple in the home in which the family of six goes to pray regularly. There are many statues of Hindu deities throughout the home, including the Hindu god Ganesh, revered as the remover of obstacles, and Shiva, the Hindu deity who destroys to make way for new creation. Along with religious themes and the motifs of Lotus and Sun, the house is said to have been inspired by the Atlantic Ocean. The owner of the $2 billion home is Mukesh Ambani, a petroleum titan, chairman of Reliance Industries and, surprise surprise, the richest man in India. Mukesh is responsible for a fifth of India's exports, which is absolutely outrageous considering India makes up for a third of the Earth's population. Mukesh's father created a business that turned into the world's biggest producer of polyester fibers and yarns. Mukesh multiplied his inheritance many times over to become one of the richest men in all of Asia. For years, Mukesh was a member of the top 10 richest people in the world. And during one surge in India's stock market in 2007, he was believed to be the richest man on the planet. But as of recently, he sits comfortably at the 20th spot. Mukesh is worth 40.1 billion US dollars. Wow. Okay, that's 61 20th years spot? Old. Who's number Did one? Did someone ask for a list of the richest people on the planet? Okay, here it is. Number one, Jeff Bezos, Amazon. Number two, Bill Gates, Microsoft. Number three, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway. Number four, Bernard Arnault, Louis Vuitton. Number five, Amancia Ortega, Zara. Number six, Carlos Slim Hello and Family. Number seven, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook. Number eight, Larry Ellison, Oracle. Huh. Number nine, Larry Page, Alphabet, co-founder of Can we Google. The alphabet? No, Number we ten, Charles Koch, Koch Industries. Number eleven, David <laughs> Koch. You guessed it, Koch Industries. Number twelve, Sergey Brin, Google. Number thirteen, Michael Bloomberg, Bloomberg. Number 14, Ma Huateng, Tencent Holdings. Number 15, Jim Walton, Walmart. Walmart. Number 16, Walmart. Rob Walton, Walmart. Number 17, Alice Walton, Walmart. Walmart. Number 18, Steve Ballmer, yeah. Microsoft. Number 19, Francois Betancourt Myers and Family, L'Oreal. Oh. Number 20, and our guy, Mukesh Ambani. Ah. We just love lists here at Mr. Luxury. As you might have noticed from the list, Mukesh is one of only two individuals from Asia to earn a spot on the list. Mumbai is the commercial capital of India and is also called the city that never sleeps because I guess they didn't know that slogan was already taken. <laughs> this city is also home here. to the entertainment industry in India, so it's commonly known as Bollywood yet another thing they ripped from the United States. While the city is home to the world's most expensive house, it's unfortunately also home to the world's largest slum. The popular film Slumdog Millionaire was set in Mumbai. 
The public reception of the house's creation has been harsh at best. I believe offending neighbors come standard when you're creating a home worth over a billion dollars. But there is certainly warrant for any offense taken in this particular oh, case, I must admit. While the house was built on the richest stripe of land in the city, it's hard to not notice the contrast in a city like Mumbai, with such depths of poverty just blocks away. Gion Prakash told the New York Times in 2010 that the home is in a way reflective of how the rich are turning their faces away from the city. In Mumbai, 40% of children under the age of 5 are underweight. The gap between the rich and the poor is as stark and vast here as any other place in the world. Still, there are some that bring up the charitable acts of the Ambani family, which include the creation of a hospital. When discussing the moral responsibilities of the family, not to mention numbers of the philanthropic ventures, specifically by Nita Ambani, Mukesh's wife. Which is great and all, but no one is going to ignore the gargantuan mansion towering over the city, no. or any of Mukesh's indulgences other than the mansion. Years before the creation of Antilia, Mukesh bought his wife an air bus for her birthday for $60 million. He had the passenger jumbo jet refitted with a living room, a bedroom, satellite TV, a sky bar, and holy a spa. Holy. Unlike Did most families like worth that? billions, no. the Ambani family owns just the one home as opposed to the expected several around the globe. Initially, the family shared a house with Mukesh's mother and brothers. But after Mukesh's father passed away of a stroke, he decided to break the bank on the 400,000 square foot home. The children of Mukesh and Nita all studied at universities in the States. Isha, the eldest daughter, recently graduated from Yale. Her twin brother, Akash, and younger brother, Arnat, both graduated from Brown University. Those are Not really that I'm schools. in any position really to judge Mukesh as a father, but it's nice to see he raised three Ivy Leaguers. That's pretty much all I've got on Antilia and the Ambani family. As always, Wait, I'm Mr. Luxury. If six. you enjoyed Where's the video, the make sure to leave a like oh, and subscribe. No, pip, pip, three children, doodly -doodly. mom and dad. That's five people. And then people. mom, his mom. Mm -hmm. The mom, mom. His mom lives there too? Okay. I'm also assuming they showed her, they kept showing her. I didn't know. That is the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Which we will never be. Two billion dollar home. That was crazy. Crazy looking house. <laughs> it's. You sit there and you think, like, I don't know, most of you all are probably the same way. You sit there and think, like, man, if I had that kind of money, what would I, what would I do? And you know, honestly, First of all, I don't know. A house that big. I don't know if I could ever live in a house that big. There's like, there was a house just down the road from us that was just recently built, and it is gargantuan. And I look at it and I'm like, I don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't need a house that big. Like, the house we have now, I'm like, is like the perfect, perfect size. Like, even if for some reason you came into like hundreds of millions of dollars, it's like, well, I, I would maybe. Pay off this house? I'd maybe build a log cabin, but I wouldn't build like a gargantuan. I am disgusting. Nothing, but I, like I guess it's, <laughs> some people like this stuff. I mean, they're all over, like all over here. You see these huge houses, and it's a husband and wife that live there. And you're like, holy moly, man. But some people like that decadence and that uh, lavishness. Are they like just um, being far, far away from one another? Maybe, but holy man, that would be. The fact they said there's like basically a hundred servants per person. What do you need a hundred servants for? I mean, on all honesty, well, I'm how many people clothe you? How many? Uh, can't you clothe you? Well, can't you clothe yourself? Well, they didn't say anything. Well, they don't. I don't know if they come and dress you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. Excuse me. No, I'm just. I'm saying that. That's just. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> But but that no. just just looking at the picture and everything, it's just it's just the kind of eyeball it and go like, okay, there's about the height of a person. You're like, holy moly, on that floor to think of like a hundred more people on that floor. It seems yeah. like it seems like it would be crowded. It did, well, it, it depends on how many square feet per floor. Twenty-seven floors. Twenty-seven floors. So four hundred thousand. How much floors. was it? Yeah. How many square feet was it? A little over four hundred thousand, I think they said. Okay, hold on. My nose um, is wait, out. hang on. If but it's just looking at all the all the two, stuff three. in there, and I, I'm not gonna lie, it's it's you look at stuff like that, and you're like, oh, that's cool, that architecture-wise. That's guess. how many square feet per floor? Fourteen thousand square feet oh. per floor. Per floor. Per floor. So yeah. that's not that's not bad for. I mean, I guess not. It's just I don't know. It's just one of those things where where your, my, my mind tries to 
I'm looking at the picture of it in my mind trying to figure out like 600 people in there that it just doesn't seem like it's good enough. Um, I think it's good enough. Troy, what are you looking for, baby? Okay, so apparently Jeff Bezos, Bezos. Is, not, is not the richest person in the world anymore. Apparently it's Bill Gates now. Yeah, they uh, probably switched back, back and forth. And forth. Amazon and Microsoft. Trying to see. Um, anyway. But, I can't see. but you look at stuff like that and you're like, oh, you know, that's that's crazy money and crazy. It, but it is still, I know for me, it's still kind of, I would still like seeing some of the stuff. You're like, oh man, that, that's crazy that, get, that they put that in the house. Like, and seeing that stuff, you're like, oh man, it's amazing. Like the fact that they said they have like a, basically a snow room. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. With that, that sounds so cool. No. That sounds no, so cool. Like, no. granted, I, I might look at it and go like, it's, it's pointless, but it's it's cool at the same time. Like, I understand things can be pointless, but I understand it can, can be cool at the same time, too. I mean, you may not like it and everything, but you're like, oh, that's pretty darn cool, though, too. Uh, okay. What? Doesn't make any sense. What doesn't make any so sense? So sometimes y'all hate on me for spending money on, like, shoes, and you're like, that's so pointless. Because uh, you don't wear them! But I wear them. Well, okay. We're not going to talk about that right now. We're going to concentrate on the video. Yeah, I may well like I said, I may I may think something's pointless, but I can also think it's kinda it's cool at the same time. It's kinda like, oh man, it's pointless, I wouldn't spend money on that, but at the same time you're like, oh, I can understand why it's you know kinda cool and all that. Shoes are not part of my thing where I think shoes are cool. I may look at a pair of shoes and go like, Oh those look those look alright, I can get those. Yeah, he buys And then his I shoes wear them until Walmart. they fall apart. Yeah, he does. I need to get a new backpack. Um, uh, but things popping up. What do you guys think of this two billion dollar home? Me Okay, me of the rich and famous me personally, the way they built it, I don't think it's that. Like, I don't think it'd be that good, honestly. Structurally sound, is what yeah. You're saying? Because they may they may have like reinforced stuff too. You gotta think of that. Yeah, but like measure over time. Let's say they don't check anything for like a long, 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 long time, and one of the main supports is like super old. It's really brittle, and then an earthquake happens and it just shatters. Well, the whole thing's gonna come down at that point if it's a if it's a main support or at least a part of it is. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure when they built it, they had people be like, "All right, you know what? How, how can we make this structurally more intact?" Something like that. I I I, I kind of get that too. But yeah, when you kind of look at stuff like like this, you're like, "Oh, look how cool and tall it is." But yeah, you might not think right off the bat, like, "Hmm, could that withstand this, or could it withstand that?" The thing that bothers me the most about this house is that it's built right by the slums. Yeah, because like instead of using that two billion dollars to help out the people that are there, like build better homes, build something, well, or to it, it help didn't. out, give back to the city. I'm gonna build a two million dollar home right next to the slums well, to show everybody how rich I truly am. I will say this: it didn't cost two billion this, to though. make it. It just cost two billion. I don't think that um, y'all might hit on me. Uh, I do think that if you have money and it is in your heart to help out, that's good. I mean, I would do that, but just because someone is rich, I don't think they should be obligated to. Help no, pay. nobody's obligated to do but so. That's not what I'm saying. Money. I'm saying that's kind of cocky. To build a two billion dollar home, I mean, home it is it is very cocky, but right next have, to the slums. But they have that right to do that. Ugh. Yeah, I, I would say if if they were going to build something like that, that extravagant, and lavish, it, maybe build it away, away, maybe in an area yes. where it's just it's just your building with like a bunch of acreage around you to where, you know, you kind of don't stand out that much, yeah. or, or it doesn't like, come across as your as your you know, like throwing it, throwing it in people's faces. Because like. All the people in the slums probably resent the people who live in there. They might, yeah. And I, I'm on the I'm on the same boat with Trinity. It's like, if you <laughs> were able to build up uh, your company or you're part of that family or whatever, and, and have that money, it's like. I mean, I I it's, get it's what your you... it's your guys' money. You do with it how you which which. It you is want their money. If you money want if you want to can... do it and, and give away a lot of your money to help people, that's fine. If you don't want to, you want to just just keep it all for yourself. And all, that's fine too. I don't think people should. I don't think. Like they try to do in this country and try to force, they want to pass laws to force you. Oh, you make too much money, so we need to tax you more and force you because you make too much money. It's like, oh yeah, I guarantee you, that. none of those people would like those if all of a sudden they came into a lot of money. Well, I'm just, I'm, they, they I'm not saying that they had to do it. I'm just saying the way they put it. Yeah. Oh no, no, I agree. Is really cocky. No, it does. It does come across like that. That's what uh, I'm saying. I mean, if you're gonna spend that kind of money to build a humongous house. Right next to the slums. Wait. Do yourself yeah. a favor. I, I, can, I can see what you're talking about. If we, Go ahead. When was it built? I don't know. Mm, I don't know if they... Did they say I when it was built? Because, like, what if, what if it wasn't built next to the slums? I think they said it was built. Babe, no, the slums have been right. there forever. Yeah, okay. it was built next to that stuff. So, um, 
Or I'm maybe if, if you want to try and be in good graces with um, local people that you're building up, build your house, but then throw somebody out to help kind of fix up the surrounding area. If if you kind of want to try to stay on good terms and you don't. Personally, uh, if it was me, I would, if I had done something nice, I'd want to be surrounded by nice, nice things Thank too. you. Only because I would want, like that's what I want to see. And I'm not saying to give these people handouts. I mean, it's it's not that. It's just I just think that I don't know. This really like, bothers it bo me. Like I think it bothers me. I can't help it. It bothers me. Like if we cut our grass and the neighbor's grass is like ugly and they got like trash in the yard, I'm like I don't like that. Like I want your the yard to look presentable. Hush, bear. Yeah, I know. I see what you're saying. If 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 you're gonna try, if you're gonna take the time to upkeep your place, know that you'd like the people around you to do the same. Yes. Because uh, yeah. it it looks nicer and everything. But yes, I mean, some people uh, aren't like that. But that was the video for the most expensive house in the world. Uh, have any of you guys actually been by Trinity? Thank you. And it's just and seen the house for yourself. And is it as all like oh man like in person uh, as I kind of looked in the video? Uh, just uh, shoot us a message and let us know. So yeah, thank you guys again so much for all your love and support on the channel. You guys are awesome. Love y'all. Bye guys. There's only Trinity. one house that I've seen that I probably would <laughs> stop. Dang Trinity. There's only, there is only... <laughs> Do that to your mom. Ow. Yeah, that's what you get. My nose is running. I gotta <laughs> <go> <laughs>